So, uh, hey guys, my name is uh, Chris Anizik. Um, hopefully you can hear me back there. So, um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of uh, Twitter's attitude kind of towards uh, open source, uh, a little kind of history uh, around the company kind of, you know, because that kind of uh, influences our, our attitude and um, kind of we'll dive in a little bit about kind of how we handle uh, compliance at Twitter and also some kind of uh, lessons we learned uh, over the years dealing um, uh, with, with that problem. So I always love uh, an agenda um, and also like you know I'm super informal so if you guys have a question feel free to raise your hand and I will gladly stop and uh, we could answer it. So um, you know agendas are always good so I'll start a little history around the company so uh, kind of how it got started because that does kind of influence how, how we operate today. Um, then I'll talk a little bit about some of the philosophy and culture that we defined uh, at Twitter regarding uh, open source. Then I'll talk a little bit about um, how we deal with compliance, our attitudes toward, towards it, and some of the logistics we have uh, in place to, to deal with it. Um, and then I'll kind of wrap things up with some lessons learned um, you know, over the years at Twitter, and then kind of wrap things up with a QA and a if anyone has any other, any other questions. So I hopefully don't need to explain what Twitter is, so yeah, hopefully you guys understand uh, you know, uh, you know, you know. There's many ways to think about it. You know, some people think it as think of it as a, like IRC for the masses, but you know, uh, in you know, in, in in the essence, it's just like a real time public distributed, uh, you know, you know, you know, system out there to connect people uh, with ideas and and other things. But uh, it started in 2006. You know, it was this kind of a very stupid, simple idea um, uh, that basically, you know, people wanted to broadcast that as much as right very very simple concept and at that time um, the, you know kind of the the software stack to run this was also very simple so like you know a long time ago Twitter was just a simple rails app with a bunch of memcache and uh, you know uh, MySQL um, it's changed a lot um, since then like if you know in the beginning we had a, uh, a shit ton of problems dealing with with rails and, and scaling it so there's a lot of you know fail whales which now you shouldn't see too much so I think that's kind of uh, uh, gone away, but to get a context of how much kind of growth that we had to deal with over over time is, you know, I joined a few uh, little like few, few few years ago. Um, you know, it, there was a lot of ramp up in employees, so anytime you're kind of scaling an organization, you have to deal with some interesting uh, challenge, and it's definitely kind of affected um, our attitudes towards open source. Uh, you know, time kept passing. 20, 2010, we also had a bunch of. Um, Kind of issues with scalability. Uh, you know, when the World Cup was happening, uh, anytime someone like served a, like scored a goal or there was like a red card, it was like servers would go down. It was bad. So eventually, uh, you know, I'm not going to dive into details, but we kind of rearchitected Twitter to be a little bit more service oriented and moved off from Rails to the JVM, and we're all kind of happy now. So that's about as much technical details you're going to get today for for the talk. But if you're interested, we could always chat offline about that. So um, you know, things kept growing. You know. Tons and tons of tweets per day. Um, here's kind of the more important slide is, so we're at about 2,000 plus people, uh, you know, globally. Um, half of those are engineers, and that's gonna kind of play into um, kind of our view in, in open source. Um, you know, ton, support a ton of languages. We got about 100% uh, or 100 plus open source projects out there that we kind of um, deal with, but so, that's nice. You know, how does you know how does our you know attitude towards open source kind of fit in this? So, like I mentioned, half the half the company was engineers, and even earlier on, uh, more so um, than half. So, in the beginning, a lot of kind of you know attitudes towards open source were like, hey, the stuff is there, let's just use it, and kind of not care about you know anything, not really worry about uh, legal issues per se. Let's just like let's use what we can and and get the service. Uh, kind of running. Let's like open up stuff that we've kind of developed too. So uh, what happened when I joined was um, there was a ton of uh, kind of like code dumping. I'll I'll say so. Uh, engineers were just like throwing stuff on GitHub, like hey, you know, here's here's some code. Uh, no license, no anything. It was just like just out there. Some of, sometimes it didn't build, but there was all the problems. But I actually didn't feel. Or actually, the other worst thing that they were doing, they're they're also leaking like like a uh, you know private IPs and passwords and other bad things, but you know, that, that happens. But I actually didn't feel so bad about this when this happened, but because um, if you recall, GitHub enabled search, you know, across all the repositories one time, and that was bad, like, people were finding SSH keys, you know, all that wonderful stuff out there. So I didn't feel too bad when, 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 when that kind of 
kind of happened. I'm like, yeah, mistakes happen. So, so essentially, uh, you know, this 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 was a problem where we didn't really have anyone that owned, uh, you know, open source at Twitter. So I kind of came on board and established uh, an open source office. We were getting. Uh, odd, oddly enough, lawyers like to send out uh, cease and desist letters, so we're getting some of those um, there. So we essentially got things um, started by uh, establishing a group of people that are especially responsible towards Twitter's um, open source practices. And one of the first things that we actually had to do was to actually define, you know, what you know, what our attitude and kind of you know philosophy is towards open source at Twitter. So um, this is kind of one of the first exercises that I had to accomplish at Twitter, and um, it essentially kind of boiled down into these kind of characteristics, which I'll kind of talk to in a little bit. But um, I'm actually kind of proud of this because it actually does like fit in a tweet. So like if you <laughs> actually try to count those up, it, it actually does uh, fit within the context of Twitter. So. Um, the first kind of principle um, that we have is, you know, internally, uh, we tend to default towards using open uh, source technology. So, I mean, it's not a surprise to a lot of you, especially if you've been in the industry for a while. But we essentially, before we kind of go down the road of uh, reinventing the wheel or like, you know, hey, trying our hand at recreating like a distributed key value store, um, we force teams to kind of benchmark um, you know, against what's out there. Like, if they want to create something, uh, go for it. But if you're actually going to try to reuse it in production, please benchmark it against, like, um, you know, like in a distributed key value store case, you have stuff like Redis and um, Voldemort and, and other stuff out there. So, um, you know, you know, the, the philosophy is that, you know, just use, use what's out there. Um, if you could beat it, great. So, um, as a result of this policy, like, pretty much the majority of Twitter stack is all in open source stuff. There's very uh, you know, very few things that I would consider proprietary outside of our kind of like ad server and uh, some of our serving infra infrastructure there. Um, the next kind of principle um, that we ran within our engineering organization was kind of, um, you know, we want to open up a lot of things and part of doing that is you kind of have to define what your, what your secret sauce is as a company, right? Um, you know, once you kind of define that, you kind of easily could tell what, 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 you, what you could open and what you can't. And, Within Twitter's case, we're essentially a service provider company, right? So we provide a service. Um, it happens to be free. Um, you know, uh, basically, you know, the way Twitter makes money is mostly in two ways. You have advertising, which you've probably seen somewhat, and also um, we have a licensing uh, business for uh, for data. So um, things um, that we kind of consider IP generally go anything related to our ads advertising system. So, but everything else is is kind of kind of fair game. So, when 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 you set it up that way, it becomes a little bit easier to define what you open. And so, if you know your secret sauce, it's pretty easy to, you know, decide what you want to what want to open. And one just like simple example from from us is a long time ago. Um, you know, a couple engineers came up to me and was like, "Hey, we want to you know open source our." Um, you know, blueprint front end front end framework, right? And you know, I'm a I'm a back end engineer. I don't really get the front end stuff. I was like, cool. You know, I mean, it's kind of like shipping down the wire anyway. So we're like, all right, do it. And you know, that you know that that project eventually became Bootstrap, and just it's ridiculous how you know popular one small little you know little act um, that we did. And then we ended up also opening uh, the majority of our kind of front end stuff because that stuff was already coming down the wire. Just happened to be mostly minified, so. Um, the other thing that we kind of, um, uh, another principle is, uh, so we kind of force people uh, on the inside to basically develop, um, you know, like they were uh, working in open source land. So um, for, uh, you know, what's interesting about this approach is basically uh, it forces us to be careful about what we use and depend on. So. We basically, uh, if you guys are familiar with the Apache uh, kind of third-party dependency guidelines, we essentially use um, you are inspired by those and kind of use very, uh, you know, permissive, um, you know, licenses for all of our third-party third dependencies um, if we can. It just makes our life, uh, you know, a little bit easier uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to enforcement, at least. Um, the other thing that we we do is we default, essentially when we open things, we default immediately to, to GitHub. Like it's just where folks develop these days. Um, you know, it's, it actually works pretty well. So uh, I don't really have too many complaints uh, uh, about GitHub since, uh, you know, 
as, except like the irony of like a bunch of open source projects kind of depending on this, you know, non kind of open source uh, uh, service and where issues and other things that are like kind of not easy to extract. Yeah, we noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I actually have like one of my nightmares is like, you know, me getting a call like, hey, you know, like GitHub just like shutting down and I'm like, oh man, that's going to be a bad few weeks for me. So, uh, but you know, it's, it's actually a problem we have in in industry right now. So, I mean, there are some, uh, some other solutions out there, like the GitLab stuff is, is doing pretty well, which essentially is trying to clone, clone GitHub, but we're, you know, but by default, if you're gonna like open source something, like it almost like, you, like there's a lot of people on GitHub and people actually do contribute to your stuff there. So um, a lot of people ask um, us kind of like, what's your opinion on open source foundations and stuff like that? So um, we, we do love, working with open source foundations. We use like, we, we sponsor Apache, we sponsor Linux Foundation, all that stuff, but we just don't prefer to start our projects there. We set, we kind of have like a Darwinian uh, view uh, that um, you first start on GitHub, see if there's any traction, if there's anything that, you know, happens, then maybe consider going it, going to foundation. Um, if not, you know, hey, just, just kind of leave it, leave, leave it on GitHub. And we've actually had, um, Quite a f quite a few cases where this happened. Like we had a, we did a kind of a collaboration with uh, Cloudera for a columnar col format for Hadoop, right? Um, uh, and uh, the project was pretty successful after a year, and then we started to get larger companies uh, to come and want to actually, you know, contribute and, and use us more. And one of the quotes um, that came that came along is uh, uh, about this is like, you know, we like. <laughs> we don't use like toy GitHub, you know, GitHub projects type things, right? Like, you know, this, this, you know, this large company said. So, um, you know, one of the funny kind of quotes internally: uh, if you ever doing like an Apache Foundation proposal, like there's like this little section that says like fascination with like you know the Apache brand, right? It's like, uh, you know, like technically we don't have a fascination, but a lot of our customers, you know, and clients of our of our software do. So you're kind of forced to go to and more independent place where they're willing to with the plan. It's I mean, completely understandable. Like if you're, you know, kind of a large company and you want to depend on someone's software and they're kind of the full owner of it, you know, I, I could understand people's view. And we've had we've had this hit in other cases. Like uh, we acquired a company, uh, uh, a piece of software came with that that we open source Storm, similar type case. Pe you know, large companies that I won't will remain nameless right now. Um, we're like, hey, we really want to like contribute stuff and work with you, but we don't want to do it on GitHub. We want to do it, you know, at at some independent foundation, preferably like Apache or something like that. So, it, you know, it 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 worked out, you know, in the end. And what actually was funny about this is that they were actually like withholding contributions. Like, hey, we have this awesome like security stuff for Storm, but not going to give it to you unless you move it somewhere. So it's a little bit ridiculous how uh, some of these companies um, uh, operate these days. Um, no, nah, I, I don't. I, I, I won't talk about Mesos, but that was essentially a project that we uh, uh, we got from a basically uh, a university was doing a university research project on some really cool infrastructure software. We decided to move it to Apache to kind of grow uh, the community, but there's no reason to talk about details. Of that um, in terms of licensing, so we generally default to uh, permiss permissive license for permiss permissive licenses for all outbound um, software. Um, basically, the reason um, for this is um, it's really like the path of least resistance. There's not much enforcement you really have to do besides, you know, attribution. Um, companies generally don't care when it comes to like adopt. Like, if your stuff's under the Apache or like MIT BSD, you're like, yep, yeah, that, that's fine. That's not something we have to worry about. As soon as you use some form of copy left, whether it's weak or strong. Uh, you know, copy left, then there's, you know, then there's like slight hesitation of adoption. And so we just generally prefer not to deal with that and just go straight up uh, permissive on pretty much um, everything we do. We generally default to Apache uh, for the majority of our infrastructure projects. Um, there, you know, there's some nice things about, you know, patent retaliation and, and trademarks of Apache. But like uh, for front end related stuff, we generally default to MIT. So, it, you know, generally we try to be uh, cognizant of the community that we work with. So, like, if we're working with Node, Node using MIT, we we'll might as well use use MIT if we if we do anything there. Um, what's interesting is that this trend, you know, it you know, I think copyleft is is going to have some like interesting 
um, you know, reckoning to deal with itself in the future because a lot of folks um, are probably avoiding it for similar reasons that we do, just to not deal with um, enforcement and, and whatnot. If you saw this study by, um, I think it was the 451 group, um, who basically trying to track like license trends over time and um, definitely, uh, you know, the permissive ones have kind of got an uptick where the kind of ones with copyleft have kind of leveled off in my opinion. This was back in 2011. I don't know how things have changed. It would be good to kind of, kind of see um, how this is, but just from my personal experience, I generally see this trend everywhere around me from like companies like Square and Stripe and other like, you know, everyone's releasing stuff under permissive based, li based licenses um, these days. One of my favorite quotes about this kind of like whole attitude, which kind of reflects, um, you know, kind of our, our opinion, my opinion, is from uh, uh, Anti Rez, who I don't know if you guys know, he's the, he's the reddest guy. So his whole thing is, um, you know, his philosophy is, you know, open source for me is not a way to contribute to the open source, the free software movement, but to contribute to humanity. So for him, this means a lot of things. Like, he doesn't really care what people do with this code, you know, nor if they release modifications back. You know, he simply just wants people to use his code in one way or, or another. So, um, and he kind of has a philosophy of, you know, he wants people to learn, you know, new stuff and, and just play with it. Uh, he doesn't necessarily want to make money out of something. Um, you know, I, I kind of like how he put it, like, I, you know, I, <laughs> something I wrote is not something that I lost, it's something that I've gained. And it's kind of a fun way to, to look at things. And he kind of has some more, um, you know, quotes on this that, you know, um, you know, you know, basically based on his kind of policy is that he, uh, he chooses a very permissive license like BSD for, for stuff based, based on that, so. Um, <laughs> so another thing that we kind of do that is a little bit unique for Twitter is, so we do, uh, we do a lot of M&A related activities and a lot of it comes, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the concept of acquis hiring, so like, you know, hey, getting a bunch of small group of people, um, mostly for engineering talent to, to help out. Uh, one thing that we're able to do is basically include um, uh, open sourcing uh, any software that is potentially acquired, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, as part of these discussions. So um, I think this is awesome because, you know, a lot of times we acquire people because they actually develop some cool stuff. Um, traditionally in industry, a lot of people just like, just shut it down, right? And so I thought we could do a little bit better on that, and so we've had a couple of cases where we acquired um, uh, Moxie, Moxie's company. I don't know if you're familiar with Moxie, but he developed like Redphone and some of that cool stuff. So um, as part of the deal, uh, we agreed to uh, open source, you know, Redphone out there. And for the for Redphone's case, we actually did use a GPL. Um, but you know, like it's 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 surprising now that like Moxie's no longer at Twitter, but he kind of has this whole open whisper system company, and he's kind of just building a community around this, this type of software, so it's awesome. I think it was like uh, a huge win that we were able to do this. It would have been a huge waste if, if we weren't able to do this, in my opinion. Is that is that something that you drive, or is it something that the talent that's being acquired drives, or both? It's a mix of both. Some some people don't care that, you know, uh, and some do, but it's something specifically that we uh, basically, you know, the open source office want wanted to include as part of as part of discussions, and um, it's it's a lot of time people are kind of excited that that's even an option. Some folks don't even like like holy crap, like I didn't even know that was that was on the table, and some folks may also have the attitude of like if we get picked up, like I don't want to deal with my kind of old stuff, like I want to just jump in immediately uh, on the new stuff. So, in the in the case of uh, we acquired a very small uh, group of folks. Uh, they were called Clutch.io, Clutch.io, and they did mobile AB, AB testing. And um, essentially, uh, they actually had some existing paying customers, right? And part of the acquisition, um, you know, the service was eventually going to be shut down. We opened up pretty much everything. One of their competitors uh, essentially picked up the software and built like a migration tool easily to migrate them to, you know, their old stuff to, to this new stuff. So like, you have all these fun little little benefits. Um, uh, I think if you acquire the right attitudes, and I think. Like I would hope that more companies kind of kind of treat acquisitions this way, but you know, you you, you could hope. <laughs> um, you know, the final thing, uh, or actually the two final things that we do is we uh, Twitter has a very like data data minded uh, view of the world, so we measure the hell out of uh, all of our uh, open source projects. So 
um, you know, it's critical for us to do this because we're able to kind of easily see, like, you know, uh, you know, it, uh, from a compliance point of view, like sometimes if you have like, uh, if you're able to see the most contentious issue for the past like, you know, week, right? If there's an issue with like, I don't know, 100 comments, right? There may be something crazy going on, or there may there may be not, right? So it's um, we essentially measure the crap out of everything and um, have fun reports that come out occasionally as part of it helps compliance. And kind of the last thing that we instilled um, in the office was uh, kind of the, just uh, the notion of paying it forward. Uh, a lot of folks at the company realized that we wouldn't be where we are today without um, kind of riding on the shoulders of the open source technology that we've used. So um, we do our best to give back financially to organizations that are kind of critical to Twitter, like Apache and Linux and, and so on. So um, it's, you know, it's, it's, I wish more companies, you know, did this. You know, there's a lot of companies out there. Uh, I mean, I don't know, if you look at like banks and financial institutions, they use tons of stuff. Like, but, you know, do they give anything back? Not really. So, um, hopefully that will change in the future. And so, you know, getting back to my point of like defining kind of our culture, this was essentially, um, you know, kind of the, the first thing that was done uh, at Twitter when the open source office was established. And this is kind of what we use as a, as like a like an open source moral compass to, to operate, um, you know, as a company. A lot of people kind of ask like why why do we like why do we do this? Um, you know, besides like it being the right thing to do in my in my personal thing opinion, you know, the best you know the best talent out there you know are generally folks that have worked with open source. A lot of technologies that are using open source, you might as well hire the best people. Um, it acts as a good way for retention. A lot of people like to work. Uh, on open source software. There's also like a double edged sword too because, um, you know, like if you hire people that are really popular open source people or they get really popular working on open source, they, people also like to hire them, so you kind of have to deal with that. But, you know, that's that's life. It's, it's, it's good for everyone. So, um, let's talk a little bit about log logistics. So, um, <laughs> So compliance is, is, is hugely important at Twitter. Um, one thing that we do a little differently than a lot of companies, we generally, we separate out compliance activities uh, into engineering. So essentially it's a, it's a function of, of engineering and not uh, legal. Um, the reason for this is we actually do have a cool kind of legal department that allows us to do this. They put a lot of trust uh, in us, but you know, anytime you kind of get engineers and lawyers, you know, involved, it's generally it's generally not fun. I don't remember the last time it was fun. So um, we, you know, we treat compliance as an engineering problem and kind of build tools to uh, to deal with it. So um, our contribution policy. So uh, you know, what do we, you know, what do we allow our engineers to do um, as a company? So I don't know if you guys are familiar, a lot of, in the US at least, a lot of employee contracts kind of have um, ridiculous terms about like, you know, any idea or anything related to your work. I think I pulled like a little quote up there, but I put it in strike through, but like anything that you've like done, you know, on, em on, on employee time or the duration of your employment could potentially be owned by, um, you know, your employer. Um, you know, we, we still, you know, I mean, it's, it's still definitely, uh, you know, in, you know, in, in, in the contract that people sign at Twitter, but we kind of have a, a policy that, you know, um, if you if you want to contribute to any open source project, you're, you're generally allowed to. We have a whitelist, essentially, of projects that, you know, and foundations people can contribute to. Um, if if it's something that we haven't to, we haven't contributed to before or requires some, like, legal CLA stuff or maybe there's competitive issues, we just ask folks to come to the um, open source office and ask if it's okay. Other than that, um, it's totally, it's totally supported. I don't know if you guys um, saw. I think yesterday there was a, a thread um, from Rackspace, which had a very interesting post that they basically publicized their kind of like uh, policy for for contributions, right? And or for open source contributions for employees. They pretty much have said that like by default they're basically allowing um, everyone essentially to contribute wherever they want and get, and actually give them. Uh, the copyright to their contributions, which is which is a little bit interesting in my opinion. I don't think I've ever seen ever seen that done. I don't know if that's indicative of a trend. Yeah. So you actually 
allow the engineers to make a judgment call as to whether there are competitive issues or not? Uh, so, uh, you know, honestly, for the past, you know, since we've had this policy in the beginning, we've had no, nothing has come up, like, you know, that would cause us to worry. Like, you know, the trust that we've put in has, has worked, has worked so far. Is there a chance for failure, potentially? Um, yes, but, you know, I think, I think trusting your folks to do the right thing uh, coupled with. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't actually thinking about it from a lack of trust point of view. Oh. Uh, if you've got a thousand engineers in yeah. the company, they don't know everything that's going on in the company and what the future plans are. Yeah. So they could choose to go right and contribute something that is in fact competitive without even being aware of it. Yeah. So I. So there's there's two ways we kind of deal with that. One is just basic education, mandatory, um, kind of open source related education based on our policies, and number two. Um, you know, as, as kind of a service provider, there's, you know, it de depends, de the definition of competi competition could be, could, could be interesting, right? Sure, so, sure. so it, in, in the end, we, we like this approach versus becoming a gatekeeper for, for everything. So we prefer to, peop to be, have contributions flow more than being, being a gatekeeper. It would drive, it drives people insane otherwise. So. Um, for oh, sorry. Uh, are these contributions go out under Twitter copyright or? The yes. Individual? So uh, the policies, if you know, typical company policy, if it's done based on like company resources or company time, uh, Twitter owns the copyright. If you use your own lap, if you like, do it off off hours and off uh, off okay. hardware. Gen generally, uh, you're allowed to to keep the copyright. Like you know, the, our our fly, our policy is like. <laughs> If 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 you have any doubts, just come to us, and and mo and and they do, and, and and it works out pretty well that way. So, I think it's a more humane way of of, of doing it. At least engineers appreciate it. Um, for outbound licensing, um, like I mentioned a little bit before, we default to the Apache for pretty much everything. Um, basically, the f policy here here is just be compatible and respected respect you know respected to the community that you're working with. Um, you know, like. Closure guys, I don't know. They love the Eclipse public license for some reason. Uh, you know, Node, Node guys. Um, you know, MIT. Uh, so, uh, you know, Linux GPL, of course. So, uh, you know, that's generally how um, you know how we operate for anything that we produce ourselves. Generally, it goes with an Apache an Apache license. Um, for inbound licenses, um, I'm sure, like you guys could pr predict, uh, for a um, for a service provider, you know, the AGPL is definitely somewhat of an interesting issue, so we um, generally avoid that. Um, in practice, it's not too bad because the amount of AGPL software out there, surprisingly, is, is not that much, so I don't think it's seen a, a lot of adoption. Um, but we also um, avoid the GPL too, mostly, um, mostly to, you know, not deal with the issue, like if we bring some bit of GPL and then we go open source uh, a potential library that depended on this, like it, it that infects our license choice potentially for that library. And also um, we do have to worry um, for, uh, we do have like mobile apps. So like we have, you know, like, you know, Twitter for Android, Twitter for iOS, Vine for Android and, and there you could potentially have an issue and we don't want to at least open source the, the code for those mobile apps at the moment. So we have to be careful. Um, uh, of that. Um, so to kind of deal with this this process, we have basically uh, we don't we don't use um, tools like Black Duck or anything like that. We kind of have a homegrown licensing um, scanning tool that that works pretty well. It catches you know for us since we're not so there's two things that there's kind of two two reasons why this you know works is um, you know we kind of have scrutiny at our distribution points. So basically. Anywhere where we actually distribute software, with you know, like it's like Twitter for iOS or Twitter for Android, there's a lot of a lot of eyeballs and, and tools uh, for that problem. Stuff that is not distributed, there's a little bit more more uh, more leniency on. And the other thing that we do that um, I don't I don't see many companies doing is we actually embed uh, lawyers with uh, product teams. So um, if you're you know like the Twitter mobile for iOS team, will actually have a lawyer kind of there as part of the team to make sure things don't get messed up. So it, it works out, you know, they're, they're good people. So, um, and 
that's essentially how it works. And then we kind of just have a white list of kind of approved licenses and banned licenses for people consuming software. That's it. Pretty straightforward. So, um, so from the perspective of an engineer, if you actually want to open some software, you just have a yeah. Oh, sorry. Quick question: it Is um, the philosophy about licensing that you've discussed is that is there pretty much consensus across the company about? Uh, Are there any disagreements? I would say the majority of the company. I think there's some consensus, but there's definitely uh, people have di that we definitely have people that have different uh, different different viewpoints on it. And you know, we we had discussion um, on the inside uh, occasionally about it. So I mean, uh, we could we could talk a little bit about that um, after the talk. But yeah, there's some interesting projects that <laughs> people uh, have an opinion on. So like uh, from the perspective of an engineer at Twitter, if you want to open up something. Um, it's just like a straightforward process. Like we're a Jira shop, unfortunately, or fortunately, or unfortunately, I don't know. So uh, we have to integrate with Jira. So we basically, if people want to open up something, they open up a Jira, point to a Git repo, and we kind of have a go we kind of have a tool that goes and scans things to make sure that uh, the code meets certain quality standards. Um, or is it? I think yeah. So like we basically automate, automate, automatically check for like license files and some other crazy stuff as part of the open source process. Was there another uh, question up here in the front? Uh, oh, yeah, I can sure. wait till end. Okay, sure. I mean, you could ask now. Like, it's fine. It'll disrupt your flow. It's fine. <laughs> I have a flow. That's so, so <laughs> haphazard. <laughs> I was like, I'm like jet lagged. That's my flow right now. <laughs> go with it. Go with it. <laughs> so, um, like I mentioned, we uh, we just kind of take an automated approach here to kind of make sure what we what we open kind of meets a minimum quality bar and also uh, uh, you know it's kind of kind of sane and with dependencies and all that stuff. So. Um, for 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 inbound stuff, um, we used to have. I mean, we do have uh, we do have a CLA still kind of modeled after the Apache one, but um, we've been um, sl like slowly using it like less and less for for projects. It's you know our kind of view of this is that it becomes come on somewhat of a barrier to contribution. A lot of people you know don't like signing them and complain and like we've made it like as easy as possible like I mean r like for, for Twitter CLA I think you just you just have to, you have to log into Twitter and just like you know sign it like you know it like even fills out your name for you it's just for you just hit the button and add some stuff but people still have an issue with it and engineers hate checking if, if a CLA is signed it's not like beautifully integrated with github like Travis CR or something like hey CLA is signed but um, it would be nice but um, so you know our philosophy is like I don't, like I, I don't know I, in the future I don't know if we're actually gonna have a you know a CLA around for for many of our stuff, so I don't see there's there's not I mean there's definitely good reason to have them, but we you know I think we're comfortable with the with the level level of risk. So. Um, a lot of people ask us about patents, so some disclosure is that like I really really hate patents, but um, uh, you know Twitter de definitely is not you know not not the largest fan either. Um, one of the things that we kind of um, interestingly did. Um, one of our uh, lawyers uh, and some of the folks on the inside worked on something called the uh, Innovators Patent Agreement. So we had a lot of engineers that, um, <laughs> uh, you know, if you worked at a company before, like IBM or what, uh, you know, whatnot, and you kind of have a really dislike, strong taste of, of patents, you don't want to like patent anything anymore, right? And so as a as a way to kind of like encourage our you know our engineers um, and. Uh, to potentially patent ideas that would help protect a company, because um, you know, if you're aware of how the patent, you know, you know, kind of industry is structured, there's troll. You know, in a previous talk, you know, you learned you know, there's trolls everywhere. Like, um, if you're a small company and a small competitor, like you're like, all right, you're kind of doing okay as a company, or like, oh hey, you, like hey, you become like, you know, hey, you're doing well enough, you became a public company, and then like all the trolls come at your door, like like unbelievable, right? So. Um, the best way to defend against that is sometimes having a patent portfolio of yourself and kind of a way to encourage that is we came up with the Inventors Patent Agreement, which basically um, basically is an agreement between Twitter and our engineers that um, patents will only be used uh, for defensive purposes and uh, you uh, as an owner of the patent have veto rights um, uh, for basically any usage um, of it. And this goes even if the patent is sold to another company for who knows what reason in the future. So, um, you know, it's 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 a unique way of of kind of dealing with the problem. You know, I, I wish patents didn't really exist, but that's not gonna 
not going to happen anytime soon. But um, some other companies have kind of adopted this approach, but um, you know, not everyone. So there are other companies out there like Red Hat that take good defensive stances on uh, on things. But um, you know, I don't know how else to solve solve this problem. So it works for us. And kind of like the last thing um, is, you know, uh, another thing that we do to kind of encourage our engineers to kind of do the right thing and also have an idea of what's going on with our kind of our open source, uh, you know, ecosystem. We just we have stats for everything, so it's kind of fun to kind of see, um, you know, uh, who's working on what, who's the most active this week, what's the most contentious issue, what, which projects haven't been touched in like a year, like maybe those should be like cold or archived or something. So. Um, Kind of last couple things are um, some kind of kind of like lessons lessons learned slash war stories from from the office. So one of my biggest mistakes I think I've made uh, was when we open source Bootstrap. You know, we chose the Apache public license, right? Like, kind of made sense to me at that time. At least seems reasonable. Um, <coughs> some dude comes up, you know, and is like, hey. Um, Hey, you know, Bootstrap guys, um, I really want to use Bootstrap within a Drupal community, but, uh, you know, in Drupal land, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, technically, I, you know, the APLv2 and the GPLv2, turn, you know, are not, are not compatible, right? At least in, in the Drupal, uh, Drupal sets of terms, they're not allowed to have a Drupal module that uses Bootstrap, right? And so we're like, you know, okay, that's kind of reasonable, like, um, Let's see what it would take to, to migrate, right? You know, at that time, like, Bootstrap had, I think, like, 200 contributors. And, and going back and asking um, 200 contributors if we could, like, relicense their stuff to MIT was kind of, like, the worst thing ever. It took, like, I think it took a year. I think it took about a year and a half. We finally actually got it done um, less than a month ago. So, um, so in this case, um, man, I don't even know. Like, this was just painful. I just wanted to talk about it. Uh, so, you know, it, our mistake was uh, in front-end land, a lot of people are preferring the MIT license and for reasons I wasn't aware at least, a lot of kind of uh, systems like WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal are under the GPLv2 and uh, some communities um, care about this. I think Joomla didn't give a shit and they just rolled with it. Um, but, uh, you know, lesson here is, you know, it's just be cognizant of communities out there that you, you know, may, you know, your stuff may be consumed by and your license choice definitely has an impact on, uh, on that uh, in the future. Uh, another one, uh, this is, this is fun too, that came by. So um, we have a lot of caching, you know, I mean, we're huge users of like Memcache, Redis and all that stuff. So um, a long time ago, uh, we forked Memcached, right? We, we, we got cute and we called it Twemcache. So. Um, the problem with this is uh, we were on, um, we tried to work with Upstream, but at the time they were just not being responsive, I don't know why. Um, so we just went off and we, we did our fork. Um, we made an announcement that like, hey, we, you know, hey, we're opening from cache, like, you know, it's based off an old fork of, of them cached. Um, you know, what happened is they got, they got super angry with us, like, they were not too pleased that we did this, like, why did you work with Upstream? Like. You know, if you use you know if you use a newer version of Memcache, like a lot of the stuff is already fixed, and so it just there was a lot of strife that happened, um, you know, due to this. Um, you know, I consider this somewhat, somewhat like somewhat my fault, and also somewhat, you know, not reaching out to upstream and being like, hey, like this is kind of what we're planning to do. So it was a huge surprise. Like, if you're going to open source a very large fork of of something, you should actually reach out to the respective community and give them at least a heads up and and why you're doing this. And that's something we didn't. Um, didn't do. Um, another thing that happened in, in our open source our so, uh, open source office was uh, kind of an act of like I guess mis misconduct. So um, you know you know initially we're you know we initially we're just like a couple hundred engineers and we grew to like a thousand plus engineers now. And so there's always ba bound to be like like a little flame war or something that erupts. And in this case, it's hilarious because it, it was like category theory and math nerd stuff. Uh, and so it's like someone reported an issue and it was basically like what what is the definition of like a bijection, right? And like we have a library called bijection and like technically 
you know, you could argue that, you know, it, it doesn't meet the technical terms of what a, what a bijection is. And so one of our engineers started getting like snippy and, you know, he was complaining about like, uh, like help everything there is overflow. So like, it just, it just like reflected bad on us. And uh, what eventually happened was like, you know, he was like, well, I had no idea how I should, like how I should act in open source, I'm like, what do you mean? Like, be nice, right? Like, but uh, so, you know, lesson, so lesson here was like, well, um, you know, we should probably have a code of conduct for our folks on how to, op you know, operate in the open. And that's what eventually did, like through some of the great work that like the Ubuntu community has done and Mozilla and some other folks, uh, we just created a code of conduct based off that and tweaked it to our needs. And uh, now there's no question of how you should, you know, act, uh, you know, in, in the open, so. Were these like employees posting on a public forum and it was like, as their role on Twitter? Right? Oh yeah, so this yeah. was uh, straight on GitHub. So some 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 person like looks at our library and they're like, oh yeah, this you know this this is great, but this is technically not what you know a bijection is and code. And then one of our employees is like, okay, you're an idiot, and essentially and argues and it, it went on like that's pretty. I linked with Fred, but it went on for a while, uh, and so it just it just reflects poorly and. You know, just just out of the discussion was like, like I didn't like I didn't know how to like act, and I was like, okay, like you know, maybe it's we should have a code of conduct, and yeah, it's it's yeah, you know, young people sometimes. So <laughs> we've had some we had some other worse ones, but I left those out. So <laughs> I think, <laughs> so uh, you know, at at the at the end of the day, um, uh, you know, I, I just kind of want to leave you with you know, like this is kind of how we you know how we operate. This kind of works for us. You know, you know, we're we're essentially. You know, we're a service provider company that provides a useful service, um, you know, hopefully uh, to folks out there. Uh, we consume a lot of, you know, open source software, but um, if you look, if you kind of look out uh, at some, like, other modern, comp like, other, like, I don't know, like, modern is the right word, but other companies out there, they, you know, that especially as service providers, they are operating in a very similar, similar fashion, in my opinion. And I think you'll continue to see this type of trend uh, for companies that are essentially um, monetizing via like you know via, via data collection or advertising or some other some some other type of service so um, other than that like I really hope you guys you know learn something new so sorry if I'm like a little you know under the weather I, jet lags kind of hit me but there's no like coffee but it's cool um, so you know I'll leave it uh, to you guys to answer or ask any questions and I'll do my best to to, to answer them I mean, I just, I misspelled open source, I lose. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, okay, you got a question? Yeah. Uh, so your first point was uh, use open. Yes. Uh, so basically you said, you tell your Don't. engineers, no need to reinvent everything you can use. For, uh, yeah. If it's out there. First scour the, the internet, you know, first scour the internet, GitHub, whatever, for something out there before trying to write, right. write your own. And if, you find like if 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 we're gonna if you're gonna write like in our case because this has happened, um, if you're gonna write your own distributed key value store, you you know really prove that this is worthwhile long term and benchmark against what what's out there and. So my question is, do you also look at proprietary solutions? Yeah, at times, yeah, yep. So it's not only open. Use what's over there. You, it's so it's like default default to open if you can. So yeah. essentially, is is probably the better way. Uh, of, of thinking out. So there are some like proprietary solutions, you know, use for thing Vertica, like mm -hmm. use some Vertica, but um, but the long term goal is to, you know, edge towards towards open open solutions. You know, you have, you have, you, you, I don't have to like sell you on the open source arguments. Like you have control, you could patch stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. So it's <laughs> yes. Question back there. Hey, how's it going? Yes, the innovator's patent agreement. So does that undertaking exist even when they move Yes, so as part of so as part of the deal, it, it, it travels with them. So Sorry. even if the patents are uh, in, uh, even if the patents are at Twitter or sold to another company. No, it's it's not so much whether it's sold to another company, it's patent Yeah. They, st they, st they still have the rights to. Yeah. So say that, say that again. So I know. The sale of the patent is not really a free sale because it's encumbered by the 
by an undertaking to somebody who could move to a competitor? I mean, we're, you know, so Twitter stance, like, we're, we're not in a bit, like, we, we have to w deal with the system in, a, in, like, we can't ignore patents, right? Because we get, you know, people try to sue us. So we try to, we try to best to mold the system into the way we, we want to. And, um, you know, the, the IPA was one way to encourage engineers to actually patent anything versus nothing. So it's, it's, it's what we have. I don't know if that best answers your, answers your question, but. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're pretty crappy, like, Could script. You the question? Yeah, okay, yeah. so, so it's like, uh, we, we have homegrown licensing scanning tools. Um, is there any chance of you open sourcing them? Uh, you know, we could, but they're just like pretty, pretty crappy scripts. <laughs> like, nothing, nothing super fancy. I guess, I mean, it could be useful, but you know, you know, it's, we're just checking for uh, license headers and you know, GPL and other type things. So it's it's really nothing. It's really nothing fancy. Yeah. I mean, it was quicker to write on our own than, fi than finding something. I actually, we, we didn't know anything existed out there, so that's probably why we wrote something on our own. And we didn't want to pay for Black Duck or anything like that, so. It's, sim it's, 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 it's simply like license scanning, code scanning, like, you know, we, we scan all this. It's, it's not fancy enough to, like, detect that someone copied, pasted a source in there. Like, that's just the level of risk that we you know, that we live with, we're, we're looking for license, licensing and hoping license information comes on. Yeah, potentially, but I'm not familiar enough with Fossology how, how it works. But I'm sure it's probably a bunch of scripts that stands for, for license editors and like, I don't know how else you do it. <laughs> yes, you have a question? follow up and say you probably should have people who built that go look at whether they can take any of their experience and put it in Fossology. It's really a good job. Okay, it was me, so, so I could, I could <laughs> <laughs> It's quite nice. Okay. Uh, it's so probably a similar similar concept. Like it's a it's a pain pro it's it's a pain point that anyone hits that, yeah, that deals with the blinds. Okay. Yes. Okay. Awesome. <coughs> anyone else anyone else have any questions? Yes. So Tom. you mentioned closure. Uh, do you actually use closure at all? <laughs> uh, through uh, we acquired a company. Um, part of the libraries were uh, closure uh, based. I think we had Cascalog and some other stuff. But we don't like it's not used that much. Like not not much as far as I know. Like the majority of Twitter these days uh, is a combination of Scala and Java code. So so you wouldn't have really had an uh, an opportunity to think about. Challenges in combining the EPL with other licenses? No. Okay. So okay. we haven't contributed much back, at least from my knowledge, we haven't contributed much back besides what we uh, acquired from uh, Backtype, which was a company, and pretty much just opened up what, what they had, in which some of it was closure based. I think Cascalog okay. is also. I've got another question. Yeah. Nobody else has a question. Um, so you said a couple of times yeah. in your talk yeah. that you default to permissive. Yeah. Do you ever choose copyleft licenses? We haven't. I mean, if we're forced, like, like if we're gonna, if we like, we contribute patches with kernel, right? Like, you know, obviously, you know, it's gonna be. You, do you contribute yeah. patches to the kernel? Yeah. So you run like the whole farm is on Linux. Yeah, it's all running on Linux. So and the, okay, and oh, I didn't realize you guys were contributing back to the kernel. Yeah, we have cool. a few. We have a few people um, that contribute back. So okay. there's a whole other thread on like, uh, yeah. It's, so, but so I'm just I'm I'm teasing you a little bit about the choice of the word default. I mean, if you if you're creating original projects, if we're creating original projects, we default to no. But it's it's not a default. It's a hard rule, right? You 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 must use a permissive license. Well, it's actually internally it's not a must. It's it's like what we actually default to. It, like engineers have an option to use whatever. Like they they are able to add, add, use another license if they want to. They just have to say why. They have to defend their choice. Okay. Oh, that's good. Um, and uh, one last question yeah. is, uh, you talked about inbound CLAs, but do you, uh, how do you handle the case of outbound CLAs where, you know, uh, other projects might require a CLA for you to push upstream things? Uh, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Like, we generally, you know, um, if they're Apache style, we generally don't, you know, we're okay with it. Like, you know, we, but 
we've actually contributed stuff to like say like Facebook, right? And like they use an Apache style so and it's okay. It just goes through a legal process. So since you use Java, would you would you sign the Oracle contributor? We have. Awesome. Yeah. Great. We we actually are gonna start contributing to Open GDK. So cool. It works. Alright, so thank you thank guys. You. Sorry for taking time.